Here we have the top 8 most fun and challenging builds in Elden Ring. I am not here to show you builds that can one shot all bosses. No sir, not today. My goal is to give you build ideas that you can have fun with. Challenging and enjoyable playstyles are the priority. Alrighty, well let's jump right into it. Now I wanted this build to make you feel like you're a sword master, a samurai. Yeah. Rather than fancy schmancy weapon arts, this relies all on your sword skills. Here we have the Sekiro build. Dual wielding katanas with the unsheathed weapon art on the Nagakiba. This gives us a nice grounded fighting style. Very powerful, but not cheesy. You can also use the Nagakiba's R2 Heavy for a thrusting pierce attack. Because sometimes you just gotta get right up in there. Yeah, baby. Our left side katana is the Hand of Melania. This is a beast power stance. I mean, these are the two longest katanas in the game. And when you feel the time is right, you can quickly switch over to the Hand of Melania and use the Waterfowl Dance. Now this dance will always be very sensitive and can get cancelled easy. But in the right situations, it is deadly. Fight back. Fight back. Fight back. Rotten winged. Lord of Blood and Shard of Alexander all can buff their setup. Also, don't you forget, parries were a big part of Sekiro's game mechanics. So we got a parry here too, baby. I say you add the Parry Ash of War to the Wakiza Kakashi Dagger. Now this lines up with the theme and aesthetic, plus you can true power stance of this dagger with katanas. So it works out quite nicely. Be a Chad and use this build to get revenge on Melania. <laughs> I have my Nagakiba as Lightning Affinity, then using the Lightning Crack tier for a little boost in attack power, alongside the Dexterity Knot tier. Lightning Affinity Wakizashi, then the Hand of Melania scales with Dexterity, 100% Dex. So we must have a high Dexterity, and then I got the Endurance at the soft cap of level 25. Wearing the Altered Eccentric Hood, as in my opinion, this looks like a wise old yeah. Japanese man with a very respectable mustache. Rotten Winged, Lord of Blood, Shard of Alexander, and Erdtree Favor. Oh, hold on, hold on a second. My god, you're not gonna believe this. The Monkey King has risen to legendary status in Raid Shadow Legends, and you can get this Monkey King absolutely free for a limited time. We are sponsored by the one and only Raid Shadow Legends. And to be honest, dude, the hype is real. A free-to-play RPG with a captivating storyline plus online PvP. Raid is visually stunning, featuring over 800 champions, including elves, knights, orcs, and many more. The game is available on Android, iOS, and even on your PC. If you download right now for free using my link or scan the QR code, you will receive some incredible heroes that will give you a huge head start on the competition. In addition, by using my link and the promo code Monkey King, you can receive the legendary king Sun Wukong, who is extremely strong with unique skills that can block and steal all buffs. His versatility makes him effective on any team. It's a rare treat to see Raid offer such a legendary champion for free. Be sure to use the promo code Monkey King within the first 72 hours of registering to receive him. Now to redeem these promo codes, tap on the left side of the screen and select the promo code option. Now type in your code and hit confirm. It's that easy. You will receive confirmation if it was a success and then you can claim your epic rewards from your inbox. Get a head start and begin raid Shadow Legends as a beast right out the gate using this legend legendary champion, plus two epic champions. Simply click the link in the description to receive Lightsworn, an epic champion from the Sacred Order. Lightsworn has the ability to use defense buffs to keep your team alive and healthy. She can also revive teammates after dying. You can claim even more rewards once you hit level 15, as you will unlock Juliana, another epic champion infamous for taking down bosses in the Sacred Order. Download Raid Shadow Legends using my link in the description or the QR code on the screen. Big shout out to Raid for sponsoring this video.
This here is a werewolf, but don't get it twisted. He is not some wild animal. This werewolf was able to tame his spirit. He maintained control over his humanity using his mind. This kept him civilized and intelligent. So with the mind of a human plus the physical prowess of a werewolf, this here is a very skilled warrior, the Howling Wolf Knight. Now we gotta go with the hook claws, but using his strategic mind, this werewolf dipped his claws into poison. Therefore, we are procking poison and blood loss together. Now 100 poison is great, at 50 bleed is just okay, it'll get the job done. But this werewolf still has his animal instincts and urges in the form of howling at the moon or maybe howling at the great earth tree, or that birdie flying in the sky, or maybe that pervert weirdo hiding in a tree with binoculars staring through your window right now. Oh. Therefore, we use in the barbaric roar to howl at our enemy, raising our animal spirit, increasing physical damage by 7.5%, but more importantly, giving us this unique heavy move set. Simply use the heavy moves for decent damage. The roar medallion will buff these unique heavies by another 15%. Keep a high endurance and make sure that we can light roll. Surely a werewolf's physical power and speed is top notch. I'd rather sacrifice the heavier armor's protection for the ability to light roll with this build. High endurance, low weight armor. As a werewolf, you're not licking little chicken wings like Shaq. Huh? Nah, you're eating whole legs, entire limbs. Yummers. The exalted flesh comes to mind, another 20% boost to physical damage. I'm wearing the blue silver male armor for a lore based reason. Yes, I have a real reason for wearing this. So if you can figure out what that reason is, leave a comment down below. And even if you don't know, go ahead anyways and comment your thoughts on the video so far. Level 80 dexterity with at least 20 to 25 arcane. Do more if you can and a high endurance. Roar medallion for the barbaric roar heavy attacks, kindred of Ra and lord of blood, and lastly, great jar arsenal to help us achieve the almighty light roll. Yes, I chopped off Blade's head and I'm wearing it right now. I'm not gonna lie though, it smells kind of funky inside of here. Now, I'm sure you've already seen variations of a Carrion Knight build that uses the Carrion Grandeur or Glint Blade Phalanx to break enemy stance. Yeah, I'm sure, but today I have made some tweaks to this formula that might be even better or at least more fun than the original. Essentially, we'll use these two weapon arts, Glint Blade Phalanx and the Ice Spear, which will deal major poise damage to break stance and inflict frost, making way for a lethal critical strike. Now I like the Ice Spear, it's great damage, it's fast, plus if you connect its twirly spinny attack when starting the animation up close, it is extremely effective at procking Frost. Now I just want to make sure that Frost Infliction is part of this build. It is very important as all damage we deal across the board will be increased by another 20%, making our critical strikes even deadlier. Main weapon, a cold infused clay man's harpoon with Ice Spear, and then on the side got the magic rapier with glint blades. The clay man's harpoon is uniquely effective for magic and cold affinities. It's especially good for weapon arts like the ice spear. Now with this, you are a monster at medium to close range. Get out there and start harpooning any moby dick you can find. Huh? Then on the side, we have our rapier. We can swap to it and use glint blade phalanx. Plus, once we get the enemy on his knees, <laughs> We use this rapier for a critical hit. It has a whopping 130 critical hit multiplier. Now we can combine this boost with the dagger talisman, which increases critical strikes by 17%. We want to be shoving our weapon into our enemies like this little kid stuffing this sandwich inside this poor lady's mouth. Oh Jesus Christ, man. Now I'm doing the rapier instead of the misery cord because first of all, the misery cord has been used a million times already. So I want to show y'all a new potentially better option for you. And the rapier will do more damage on the charging pierce attack from the glint blade phalanx skill. That ending thrust will deal more damage and poise damage using the rapier. Plus it has a longer reach. I'd say it's a valid option. 
Now the focus of this build is the Ice Spear and Glint Blade Phalanx weapon arts. But of course, you can also use a little shield with carrying retaliation to parry if you want to. This is the easiest way to open up enemies for a critical strike. The carry and retaliation has the best parry window time out of all the parry skills. Now remember, you can use both Glint Blade Phalanx and the Ice Spear to great effect immediately after performing a critical strike. As the enemy is standing back up, thinking they gonna get their revenge on you, you can do them dirty and pop one of these attacks right on top of them. I'm wearing a couple pieces of the Spellblade set because all these magic ashes of war are buffed by this armor set. You want to prioritize your intelligence level all the way to increase the magic damage on our weapons. As these weapon arts scale primarily with intelligence and some dexterity. Dagger Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, and the Urtree Favor. I'm using this to make sure I can get that 51 poise number as over 50 will at least let you tank normal attacks from most enemies. One last option here to optimize this build even more is by subscribing to this channel if you want more awesome gaming content. Be part of this growing community. Moving forward, for anyone who is sick and tired of flashy weapon arts being the meta, well this build is for you. Because here we have a boss killing setup that relies on effective combat skills. So I call this build the Simple Slayer. Here's the basic strategy. You use Endure, Jump Attack, Follow it up with two L1s. Now that right there is a full attack combo. Power Stance and Great Hammers. A combo chain only takes three attacks to complete, making it perfect for the Twin Blade Talisman. You add on the Claw Talisman for the initial jump attack, and boom. See, most other weapons have four or five or more attacks in their moveset combo, but Dual Great Hammers only have three, making it very easy to activate the Twin Blade Talisman buff, which increases the damage on our last attack in our chain. So you start with a jump attack and follow through the combo, dealing a ton of damage. Using Endure will help you land that combo. It'll at least guarantee you the first two strikes. Heavy Brick Hammer with Endure, and Heavy Great Mace with Crag Blade. Both of these Great Hammers have an S tier strength scaling, plus they both can be obtained quite easily. Another option here is using Dual Spears. The Spear Power Stance only has 3 attacks in its combo also, attacking very quickly, allowing you to perform the same strategy, but with Spears. You can stack on the Spear Talisman as well, for a buff to pierce counter damage. So dual spears can be even more powerful with their speed and blood loss. But I'm focusing on hammers simply because we don't see hammer builds very often. So I wanted them to get the spotlight, give them a little confidence boost, you know what I mean? Besides the Raptor Black Feather, I'm wearing all heavier armor because we are tanking through attacks. Claw Talisman, Twin Blade Talisman, Great Jar Arsenal, and the Spear Talisman if you're using dual spears. Up next, here we have the Demon Hunter. One very underrated crossbow is the Pulley Crossbow. Now this bow hits him with that triple pew pew. This is still pretty lame for the most part, but it shines with status buildup. Poison, Scarlet Rot, Bleed, Frost, and even Sleep. This crossbow does a remarkable job at inflicting these effects. Procking poison and scarlet rod or frost from this far away is very powerful. And then when enemies push closer, we say get back bitch, get back. Using that diabolical combo of spinning weapon Ash of War with the Blood Flame Blade. Heavy Great Scythe has a high attack power and long reach. Great for spinning weapon Ash of War. Now right now I have the Rotten Winged Insignia, Shard of Alexander, Thorny Crack Tear, and the Flame Grant Me Strength spell. All in effort to buff the damage on this Blood Flame Rotation of Death. So, the Spinning Strikes Ash of War is very similar to Spinning Weapon. Spinning Strikes is a bit slower, but more damage on each hit. Plus, you can continually perform it. 
This can dish out insane damage against bosses or larger enemies that have high health pools. So if you prefer this, you can use spinning strikes instead. I mean, what's great about this is that you can move while swinging. You're not stuck in one place like with the Black Flame Tornado. Here you can wobble around while attacking, which makes a huge difference. Or you can use a totally different weapon art such as Sword Dance. Now this is great for catching booty in PvP. Blood Flame Blade and Flame Grant Me Strength as spells. Thorny Crack Tear and the Strength Knot Tear. Arrow Sting Talisman. Shard of Alexander, Rotten Winged Insignia, and the last one is a Flex Spot. The Spear Talisman can buff your crossbow's damage because the bolts count as pierce damage, but only when counter-attacking. Now you want that soft cap of level 80 strength, and then just be sure to hit the requirements for everything else you need. Alrighty you dirty jabroni, we have made it into the big top 3. Make sure to drop a like on this video if you made it this far. A shinobi that went rogue because his fellow shinobi friends would not stop making fun of his Blue's Clues lunchbox that his ninja mommy gave to him. But these were not actually his friends. In fact, they hated him because he was the only male. All the other Black Knife assassins are female. So when they saw him, all they pictured in their minds was the evil patriarchy. Oh my god, is that, is that the patriarchy? <laughs> So he left his village hidden in the ice. He had a very fast and agile move set with frosty ninjutsu powers, capable of assassinating entire groups of vicious warriors. And unfortunately for every enemy in this game, this shinobi is in a bloody rage, looking to take revenge on the world, willing to slice down anyone in his path. Oh, not, not this guy though, not this guy. Look at him, man. He wishing he had a computer so he could watch Elden King videos. Or maybe he just wishing he could check out Ronnie's OnlyFans account so that he could beat his little meat while looking at her feet. Oh, that's bars. So here we have the Frozen Shinobi, wielding two bloodstained daggers with the cold affinity. This setup has decent blood loss, but it deals a bonkers amount of frost buildup. And then that frost will increase all subsequent damage. And of course, Bloodhound Step. Gotta have Bloodhound Step on a Shinobi build. Then we got the Chilling Mist on my left hand dagger. Chilling Mist can be used simply to enhance your weapon before engaging in a fight, or used while you are fighting. It will give plus 60 increase to frost buildup. So this already super quick dagger has about 165 frost. Yeah man, that is bonkers. And just to further prove how insanely effective these are, look, they do the same amount of status buildup that a katana would deal. Meanwhile, the dagger move set is nearly twice as fast. Though the downside is that daggers are very short range. Now, because these daggers are so fast, we definitely want some successive hit buffs. Now I'm using both Ryan Winged and Millicent's. For some reason, I feel like this build should have a lot of health. This is a beefy boy shinobi. I have well over 50 vigor, plus the Opaline Hard Tier for a 15% damage reduction. Ryan Winged and Millicent's, Lord of Blood, Bulgoat's Talisman for extra poise. Now I know Bulgoat's is not super duper efficient here, but I just wanted to get my poise at least past 76 to 78. Now the end of the story goes like this. The shinobi returned to the village hidden in the ice with one goal in mind. He dropped his big balls on the table and slaughtered everyone in there. What a happy ending. Moving forward, here we have the Glass Cannon Grand Poobah. And now when I say Glass Cannon, I literally mean Glass Cannon because we are using the underrated Crystallian Sorcery. With the right build, these crystal spells can actually be viable. Well, kind of. You have Shattering Crystal, which is essentially like a sawed-off shotgun blast. A close-range, wide blast attack. Now, this is great for groups of Weenie Hut Juniors throughout the lands. Crystal Torrent. This is a crystal version of Comet Azure. It doesn't have as much range, but can still do some serious damage. 
Then the crystal release, an AoE attack that rains down crystals from above. Now listen, I am casting with the Carrion Regal Scepter, then holding the Crystal Staff in my other hand, so I can still get the buff to Crystallian spells, but cast with the Regal Scepter because this has a higher scaling. Now other than these three Crystal Spells, I have the Glenstone Comet Shard right in the first spot. This is a solid spell you can rely on to pop off quick and deal good damage. Plus, the Azura's Glenstone Crown that I'm wearing, this will increase the damage of Glenstone Comet Shard by 10%, so it works out very well, as this fits with the aesthetic and fashion of this build too. Then I got the Terra Magica, and can even use Chilling Mist. In order to make our Glass Cannon Spellcaster truly powerful, of course, we need 80 Intelligence, and then we want that Magic Crack tier. But I'm also using the Unlimited FP Flask, the Cerulean Hidden Tier. Now this Hidden Tier will allow us to go bonkers for 15 seconds. This pairs with the Crystal Torrent spell, allowing us to continue the Crystal Barrage, piling up the damage, just like you would with Comet Azure. Now I'm not gonna lie bro, this is about the only time this Crystal Torrent spell is any good. All three of these Crystallian spells, for the most part, are straight up dookie. Straight doo doo dog water. The Shattering Crystal can be good against small enemies, but mostly they are just no bueno. But that's what makes it fun man, trying to make these finicky spells actually viable. Cause when you do succeed with them, it really feels awesome. But we do have only around 40 Vigor because psh, only scrubs need Vigor, am I right? And then we want a decent mind level, so we have plenty of FP. Magic Scorpion Charm, Graven Mass Talisman, Ritual Sword Talisman, and Urtree Favor. Boom, baby, Glass Cannon build. And I've got to say in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. Screw it man, Rivers of Blood is the most badass weapon in the game, and I'm here to create a fun and challenging build using this naughty, naughty boy. Naughty, naughty. So here we have the Pyro Naughty Boy. This build is the melee combat form of the Glass Cannon Spellcaster, because we have a truly overpowered weapon, but you yourself are very, very fragile. Wielding nothing but the Rivers of Blood, buffing this bad boy up as much as possible. Now the regular attacks deal that Blood Flame fire damage, but the weapon art does not deal fire damage. It's entirely just physical damage and blood loss. The Rivers of Blood is optimized most effectively with a 55 Dexterity and a 50 Arcane. Yeah boy, this is one dangerous katana man. So we have low defense, but high movement speed with the ability to light roll. Yes sir, light rolling. Do you have any idea how fast I am? How fast as fuck, boy? Now, to be honest, with this setup, you probably will die within one to two hits. Like that's it. I know, it's tragic. But that's the point here. We sacrifice defense for speed and attack power. A very healthy 35 Vigor, Endurance Soft Cap of 25, my initial Dexterity level is 42, but with the Okina Mask and the Dexterity Not Tier, that brings the total up to 55 right at the Soft Cap, 50 Arcane, and 15 Faith, just enough to use the Flame Grant Me Strength. Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood, Fire Scorpion, and the Green Turtle Turtle, Flame Crack Tier, and Dexterity Not Tier. Now listen up fellas, this video is very special because this is the grand opening of our very own Discord. Yes sir, I have a Discord now and would love if you joined it. We designed it specifically for gamers like you, focusing on action RPG and Souls-like games. The link to it is down below, would definitely appreciate y'all check it out and be part of this growing community. And remember, my link to Raid Shadow Legends is down below as well, so be sure to check that game out. Alrighty, my fellow jabronis, thank you for watching.